So, this uh, digital signal representation, so this uh, gives us the flexibility by which we can uh, think about uh, digital processing of this uh, signals from the environment. So, this analog signals that we are getting, so if we want to process them digitally, so uh, we have to uh, think about their representation, because anything that you want to do, first of all uh, what is required is to uh, store the information that you have got from the outside world and for storing the information, so we have to go for this uh, digital form only. So, uh, by using this binary numbers, we can uh, we can represent any quantity. So, we will uh, see in our course that this by the different number systems are possible and in a computer system, the number system that is used is the binary number system. So, where this individual digits are only 1s and zeros. So, what we can do this, uh, we can represent two different st state of some signal. Uh, by, by, by means of these two uh, different notations 0 and 1. So, maybe if it is uh, some voltage value, so we can say that okay, this uh, 0 is 0 volt and 1 is 1 volt like that or if it is uh, say 0 is uh, 0 volt, 1 is 5 volt or it may be 0 is minus 12 volt and 1 is plus 12 volt or the, or the other way. So, 0 is minus 12 volt sorry 0 is plus 12 volt and 1 is minus 12 volt. So, like that we can have different type of conventions that we follow, but ultimately the information that we store, so that is in some digital format. So, for example, you can have this binary 2, so 2 is represented by 2 bits 1 0 that could represent a 2 volt signal. So, if we say that 1 binary 1 corresponds to a 1 volt signal, so you can say that the uh, binary value 2 it corresponds to a 2 volt signal. So, we generally have to agree on some sort of code. So, what that is what I was talking talking about some time back. So, you can say that say minus 12 volt is 0 and plus 12 volt is 1 or somebody may say that the plus 12 volt is 0 and minus 12 volt is 1. So, both of them are possible. So, if you look into different uh, um, systems, you will see that all these types or different types of representations are possible. So, we must agree on some sort of coding that we have and the dynamic range of the signal that we want to represent. So, see whenever we are talking about uh, some uh, uh, representation of a number, so we are dedicating certain number of uh, bits in it or uh, certain number of digits for that purpose. So, using that many digits, so you cannot represent any arbitrarily high number. So, if I say that I, I, I have a number system, I have a space to write only say 3 uh, digits. So, I cannot uh, use it for representing the number 2556 in that system because that requires 4 digits, uh, 4 digit space, but we do we have only a single digits, uh, 3 digit space. So, I cannot have 4 digits there. So, this way we can uh, think about uh, this uh, range. So, th this dynamically what the, uh, what, the, what the values that signal can pick up. So, we must know that and accordingly we have to decide the minimum number of bits that we will be using for storing that information. Possible digital representation of a pure sine wave uh, of known frequency, for that purpose we must uh, choose the maximum value. So, what is the uh, maximum peak that we have? and resolution or error that is at what level at what uh, difference of values you are going to take. Okay. So, we will say if suppose we want 1 volt accuracy. Okay. So, suppose uh, that is the and the maximum amplitude is minus uh, is 50 volt maximum amplitude is 50 volt. So, that is the signal goes from the signal goes from say minus 25 volt to plus 25 volt in the two ranges. So, if we say that the minus 25 volt I will represent a, as a 0, then 20 minus 24 volt I, I will represent it as uh, 1, minus 23 volt I will represent it as 2. So, like that. So, if we think about uh, this type of uh, levels, then ultimately for this uh, minus 25 volt to plus 25 volt, this 50 volt range, I will have 50 different levels of the signal that we can get. So, if we think about 1 volt accuracy. So, as a result, so this 50 different values have to be represented and in a binary number system we will see that it will require 6 bits to store that information. So, if you are uh, given less number of bits, so you will not be able to represent these 50 different levels. So, 
or so you have to suffer on the accuracy side okay so suppose instead of say 50 different levels so um, i want to store uh, i want to um, have i am given only say 5 bits so with 5 bits so i can have 32 different levels possible only so accordingly my accuracy will be less for the signal so this way this digital signal representation itself it introduces uh, some amount of error so if we are go if we are looking for uh, these exact values if we are looking for exact values then we have to go for the analog signals definitely but uh, as soon as we go for this digitization process some amount of error is introduced into the system so that is there but we'll see that there, there are different uh, types of errors that can crop up uh, in, uh, into these analog systems and uh, that makes the digital systems much better from that point but as far as the initial quantization is concerned so digital signals they they have got some of some amount of error associated with it so how can we represent digital uh, logical functions in, in in digital representation so digital signals they offer an effective way to execute logic the formalism of performing logic with binary variable is called switching algebra or boolean algebra so when we talk about algebra, so the term algebra means that there will be uh, some values that you can uh, that uh, that individual variables can pick up. So that is there, and I can do some operations on that uh, alge on on those values. So there are certain there will be some axioms or uh, fixed uh, the accepted norms for that particular uh, system, and then on that we can build up the total set of computations. So, in case of digital uh, signals, so we will see that this Boolean algebra or switching algebra, so that uh, makes the um, basic, uh, basic um, uh, foundation stone for developing the system. And you may be knowing that this Boolean algebra, so this was discovered long below these digital circuits uh, came into uh, existence and at that time it was pure mathematical interest, but once this uh, digital systems got introduced then this uh, again this uh, boolean algebra got its importance back so this digital electronics when we are talking about it combines two important properties one is the ability to represent functions by coding the information in digital form so that is uh, one uh, uh, one uh, uh, property and the other property is that it can control a system by a process of manipulation and evaluation of digital variables using switching algebra. So, you can do some computation, you can uh, find out uh, some, you, you can have a set of conditions for which certain signals are to be turned on. For example, uh, if you if, uh, in a plant control, so there are uh, maybe different conveyor belts moving, then items are being put onto conveyor belt. And then uh, they, apart from that there may be some uh, fire safety system so if the smoke detector is sending signal so like that there may be a large number of uh, signals the inputs that you can get from the plant and accordingly you may have to do a set of other operations so in this process uh, uh, they can be represented by means of some uh, uh, logical equation or logical functions and those logical functions or those control functions they can be uh, implemented by means of this they can be represented by means of switching algebra and once you have represented them using switching algebra so you can implement them using digital circuits so digital signals so this is the uh, we next we go into why digital signals are preferable so digital signals can be transmitted received amplified and retransmitted with no degradation so why do i say so because if you are transmitting some digital value, so you know that the ultimately what is transmitted is a bit 1 or 0. So when you are transmitting a bit as 1 or 0 at the receiving station, so if, uh, if I say that uh, 1 in my system 1 is represented by plus 12 volt and 0 is represented by minus 12 volt. So at the receiving station, so if you get some intermediary value say minus uh, 5 volt. So, you can say that minus 5 volt is close to minus 12, so that is that can, can be taken as 0. So, that way we can uh, we can say that even if uh, I have got some values degraded, but digitally the value is not degraded. So, digitally the we can still take it back to 0. So, these binary numbers, uh, so they are they are natural method for expressing this logic variable. 
and complex logic functions can be easily expressed as binary functions. So, we'll, uh, as, as I was telling that in a plant there may be different inputs coming from different uh, regions and then uh, we can have the overall plant function specified in terms of this control operations that it is doing and that may be a set of logic functions and they are represented as binary function and from there we can get the uh, function implemented in digital circuits. So, we can achieve arbitrary levels of dynamic range that is the ratio of the largest possible signal to the smallest one can be distinct that can be distinguished above the background noise. So, what happens is that uh, so whenever you are transmitting a signal there is always some amount of noise that will get added into the system. So, if you are transmitting some analog signal, so you can say that uh, the analog signal say suppose I am transmitting a value of uh, say 12 volt and due to this noise, so this value becomes uh, degraded to say uh, 7 volt. So, there is a noise introduced of minus 5 volt and at, at, at some instant and it becomes uh, uh, 7 volt. So, at the receiving end I do not know whether the value was value is really 7 volt or it is 6 volt or it is 12 volt or something intermediary. So, that way we cannot uh, uh, find out the thing, but if we say that uh, in case of uh, in case of digital one. So, if the if, if I know that plus uh, the uh, 1 will be transmitted as 12 volt and 0 will be transmitted at minus 12 volt. So, we can safely say anything above 0 is possibly up 1 and anything below 0, 0 volt, so is possibly a bit 0. So, this is the amount of the noise margin or the noise immunity that we have in the digital system. So, it is going to be much more compared to the analog system. So, digital uh, and the last point is that digital information it can be easily and inexpens inexpensively stored. So, we can store these uh, values in uh, so with the advancement of this uh, DRAM technique uh, te technology and all and SRAM technology and all. So, we can store large amount of information digitally in the system and the quality is also much better than the analog storage. So, so what do you mean by this uh, analog signal or digital signal? So, the first diagram that you see here, so this is an analog signal. So, over the time, so this uh, the it may be a voltage signal or a current signal. So, it is varying like this. So, this is the analog signal. So, analog signals take on continuous value. So, there is you cannot say that at different, so there is nothing like at different times. So, this is normally specified in terms of some uh, uh, function over time or maybe as a differential equation and all, but ultimately this is a continuous function of time. So, typically a current or voltage may be representing an analog signal. Digital signal, so they appear at some discrete levels. So, usually we use the binary signals that it only two levels like here you see that we can have a low level and a high level. So, this may be for uh, this for this much of time the signal was low, then for this amount this range of time the value is 1, then again for this range the value is uh, uh, 0, again it is 1. So, one level is referred to as logic 1 and the other level is referred to as logic 0. So, of course, uh, it is not mandatory that this high level should be 1 and low level should be 0. Somebody may say that my high level is uh, 0 and the low level is 1 that is very much possible. But what is uh, what is uh, required is that there are two distinct levels one of them is called logic 0 another one is called logic 1. So, we have got different uh, this uh, digital signals. So, they are going to be discrete in terms of level. So, it is not a continuous function like that. So, with that, so if we have got an analog signal, so now I cannot have I cannot have uh, information stored uh, for every time instant in my digital system. Like so, analog signals are continuous in time and voltage or current. So, like say uh, so we can so or charge. So that way we can have these analog signals uh, represented over time. But when you do a digitization, so at every point we basically do a sampling. So, at some regular intervals of time, so we sample this uh, digital signal and then what we get is over the time intervals after separated by time intervals we get some signal samples. So, the after digitization this continuous analog signal it becomes a set of discrete values only. So, they are typically separated by this fixed time intervals, so which is known as the uh, uh, 
uh, which is this uh, typically this is known as the sampling interval. So, after this uh, sampling intervals, the value is uh, sampled again and these values are stored. So, ultimately for digital signal, so what we will need to do is that we need to store the values of the signals at these discrete points only. So, if you are willing to do a good approximation of the analog signal, then you have to do a sampling at a much higher rate and if you are not so, then you can do a sampling at a lower rate also. And from the communication theory, you, you can find out like what is the minimum rate at which we have to do the sampling and all for periodic signals, etc. for reconstruction purpose. The important modules that we have in this uh, process, one is the digital to analog converter, so or DAC. So, digital to analog converter will come when this uh, uh, after doing this digital processing, so we are trying to give some signal to the environment. So, the and the environment is analog, so we have to give some analog signal. So, this uh, so this n bit digital value that is coming as input to this digital to analog converter module. So, it produces a voltage level. So, you can say that if this uh, the in general, so it is, uh, it is uh, if VFS is the voltage, the full scale voltage uh, from is a VFS from 0 to VFS are the values. Then based on these values that we have got, so if all this B1, B2, Bn, so if all these bits are zeros, then what you get is 0 at the output. So, if you are giving a, a all 0 here, so you are getting a 0 output here. On the other hand, if you are giving all these bits as 1, okay, so you will give, be getting a very close, you, you will be getting the expression V o will be very close to V f s. Okay, it is just uh, slightly less than this V f s. So, which is basically uh, because of, so that, that way you will get a value which is very close to V f s. So, you can say that okay, this is the voltage level that you are getting, so that you, you are getting the full scale ring. So, that way this digital to analog converter, so they are uh, useful for converting the digital value that we have got uh, uh, after processing into some analog signal for to be sent to the environment. So, what is the smallest possible voltage change? So, since this is a, uh, uh, this is a, so to change the value you can, you can vary these bits and since this quantity b n into 2 power minus n, so this has got the minimum contribution. So, if you are going to change from uh, uh, the smallest possible change that you can do is by changing this uh, flipping this particular bit b n and that way this, uh, this, uh, uh, this minimum change that is possible is the 2 power minus n into v f s. So, this we call the least significant bit or LSB. So, that is the to this nth bit is the least significant bit or the LSB. So, by changing this LSB, we can change get this much of change. So, this is the quantum, this is the quantization level. So, you cannot represent a uh, voltage change which is uh, finer than this 2 power minus n into VFS. So, you cannot get uh, better than that. So, that, that so that way this will have the error part. Similarly, we have, uh, so this is another, uh, uh, this is a commercial, D, some commercial DAC. So, this is T i is 20 bit sigma delta DAC, then this is, a, this is an 8 channel D, DAC from Cyrus. So, like that. So, essentially what is happening is, so this uh, light colored signal, so this is the analog signal that we have. So, and these are the samples. So, now if you are, uh, if you are doing a, a digitization, so this is basically uh, getting approximated like this. Okay. And then, uh, uh, so, uh, so these digital values that we have, so that is converted into levels like this. So, this signal that we are getting is a close approximation of what we actually want. Okay. So, that way we say that uh, these digital to analog converters are doing the conversion. The other component that you are the, the opposite of this is the analog to digital conversion. So, where uh, on this uh, analog side some value is coming and then we want to convert it into some digital value. So, like uh, uh, say, say one uh, conveyor belt is moving and you are uh, just trying to see what is the speed at which it is moving. So, the speed is coming as an analog quantity, uh, some analog for some transducer will be there and it will be coming as a uh, analog signal and that analog signal we want to convert to digital values, so that we can uh, do some processing, we can either increase it or decrease it like that. So, that way we can have the analog to digital converter uh, on that side. 
So, this analog input voltage V x, so it will be converted to the nearest n bit number. So, again the same thing that uh, for a 4 bit converter, so 0 it, it represent the V x, uh, so, so if you it, it, it 0 to V x, so that will input it, it yield 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1 digital output. So, when you give it 0 as input, so you get 0, 0, 0, 0, when you give the maximum value V x as input, so you get 1, 1, 1, 1 as the digital output. So, that is the design principle of this analog to digital converter. So, we will see later in our course how to design this ADCs and DACs uh, uh, in, in different ways. But however, ultimately this is the thing that we want. So, if we give a, uh, a 0 voltage, so it should, it should give 0, 0, 0, 0. If we give uh, Vx the maximum possible voltage, then it should give all 1. So, output is again approximated, uh, uh, approximation of the input data. Uh, to the uh, due to the limited resolution of this n bit output. So, error that we have, so this is actually the V x that we want to represent, but what we actually get is this one. So, uh, these bits that are coming, so if all these bits are 1, then you will be getting a value which is very close to V f s, but this value is V f s. So, this uh, V f s minus that approximation that gives the amount of error that you have in the process. So, this way we can have the analog to digital conversion. So, this uh, DAC and ADC they are two very important modules that you have in a digital system when it is interfa interfaced with the analog domain. So, we will see that in due course of time. So, if you look into this analog and digital signal, so it, it seems that we are we live in an analog world. So, things like, like we make the statements like uh, louder quieter, hotter, colder, longer, shorter. So, this is a sliding scale. So, uh, maybe if I say that make it louder, so you just increase, you know, turn the knob a bit and uh, I maybe the, maybe I am satisfied, so I say okay, okay or I say okay, no, no, reduce it a bit, so make it quieter, so like that. So, th th that is an analog signal. When we are recording some sound on a tape recorder, so we are putting the analog signal onto the tape. Uh, the digital signals are not on a tire on a sliding scale. So, they are either on or off like uh, the light switches. So, the either the switch is on or the switch is off. There is nothing like light is turned half on. Of course, if there may be intensity control of the light. So, that may be uh, there may be some uh, on uh, some analog uh, some sliding scale may be there. So, if we just look into some of the signals and try to see whether it is analog or digital. So, this volume control on a radio, so this is an analog signal, traffic lights, so they are either on or off, so they are digital. So, this is green, uh, red and yellow, so either they are on or they are off. Motorbike throttle, the amount of uh, fuel injected into the system, so that is uh, going to be an analog signal, because uh, with the place of the, uh, the as we turn this uh, accelerator, so it uh, puts in more and more fuel. The dimmer switch. So, if you can control the, uh, the amount of illumination, so that is also an analog signal, whereas a light switch which just turns on or off the light, so that is going to be a digital signal. Water tap, so this is again an analog signal, okay. so you can turn the tap as, as much as you want and accordingly the amount of water passing will uh, vary. Music on a CD is a digital signal, so the CD the compact disc they store uh, information on a digital format and music on a tape, so that is going to be an analog signal, because they, they are it uses analog principle to store the information. So, this way diff different, different signals, so you can think about them in digital or analog, but most of the signals or the co most common signals that we have, so they are all uh, analog in nature. So, uh, we have to pass them through an analog to digital converter to get the corresponding digital versions. And uh, if we are trying to produce an analog signal through some digital processing, we have to produce, we have to have a digital to analog converter for converting the digital value to analog. So, this is another typical example of analog and digital signal. So, a security floodlight, so it switches on when you approach. So, it may be it has got an analog input, so it senses the infrared, uh, the amount of infrared that it sees from you and produces a digital output. So, floodlight is either turned on or off. So, when it is uh, doing that uh, sensing of this infrared component, so that is an analog signal, it is an analog input. 
but when it is uh, producing this uh, fl floodlight once it is turned or it is either turned on or turned off so that is going to be a digital signal so we can call it an analog to digital converter in that sense okay so so that is one way of the adc that you can see what is the problem with analog signal it is the noise Okay. So, the uh, lot of noise gets introduced like if you are uh, the for the sound there may be a hiss or out, uh, um, that get introduced or if it is an image or picture there is a uh, speculate uh, dots may, may get introduced into the uh, picture due to these errors the, or the, uh, that got introduced from the noise. So, when we are sending a signal over a long distance the signal will get weaker okay, because of losses and we need to boost the signal otherwise you have transmitted as I was telling. So, you transmitted a 12 volt and over the length so it got uh, reduced maybe so much that you get a very low voltage there. So, that so, so that way uh, you need to you know, amplify in between. Okay. So, normally what we do is that we put some periodic amplifiers on the path and then the amplifier amplifies the uh, signals it boosts up the signal. So, that uh, at receiving end you get a reasonably uh, um, uh, correct signal. So, the problem is that we end up boosting the noise as well. So, in the process, so in the if, if we have got a boosting station, so if previous to that uh, uh, in the previous segment some noise got introduced. So, that noise is all will also get boost up in the process. So, this noise also gets amplified or noise also get you know, boost up. So, that is the problem with the analog signal. So, if we on the on the other hand the digital signal so if we convert the signal to digital form and then send it still gets weaker and noise will still noise is still creeps in because that is the ultimately what we transmit is some analog uh, voltage values so that will be uh, that will make the signal uh, weaker and the noise will come so there is no doubt about it but uh, it is like this if you read the text yourself the software in your brain can reconstruct the text because you know that uh, so because even the, the, the letter shapes are supposed to be even uh, even though they are blurred so like if you do a photocopy of a page with a page which is uh, not very clear okay so if we do a photocopy so after photocopy we will get a even worse page but if you uh, do it like this if you read the text from the page so possibly you will be able to figure out those blurrings of the uh, different uh, letters that you have on the page and we can just correct it. So, this is just what this uh, digital uh, thing does. So, it may be the voltage value has reduced a bit, but it is not that much degraded and still possibly we can figure out that this was a 1 and this was a 0. We can reconstruct the signal and then again transmit. So, that way the amount of uh, noise that got introduced, so that may get uh, reduced far further. So, analog signals they suffer from noise but do not uh, need such complex equipment. On the other hand, the digital signals uh, need fast clever electronics, but we can get rid of uh, any, any such noise. So, this is the, so that tells the, summarizes analog and digital signals. So, one of the very basic components when we are doing this uh, digital uh, switching and digital circuits, so is, uh, is a, a transistor and the most recent transistor that is being used in the digital industry today. So, they are CMOS transistors. So, in CMOS transistors, so we will uh, discuss in detail later just to tell you how it works. So, this is a semiconductor block. Okay. So, so, so that is normally, so this is uh, on that semiconductor block we have got two dedicated region, one is called a source, another is called drain. So, they have got some type of impurity uh, diffusion, they, they are some amount, some types of diffusion basically. So, if this uh, 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 semiconductor block that we have, so if this is of say uh, P type semiconductor, then on this uh, two regions, so we uh, put some N type diffusions. So, one region is called source, other region is called drain. So, the region in between, so it is covered by some silicon dioxide layer and on top of that we put a another uh, uh, layer of polysilicon gate. Okay. Now, normally what happens is that if you apply a voltage onto this gate, okay, positive voltage onto this gate, so it will uh, it will attract the electrons from this uh, uh, from this substrate, we call it a substrate. So, the it will call the it will attract these electrons into this uh, into this uh, channel between the source and drain. And now, if there is a potential difference between source and drain, so if you apply a battery 
between the source and drain then these electrons will move through this channel they will go from source to drain or drain to source depending on the polarity of those signals. So, you get a current flow through the, through, the, through the device. So, if you apply a positive voltage here, so it will attract electrons turning the channel between source and drain into a conductor. So, this region will behave as a conductor. So, that is why it is called a semiconductor. So, will be, so if, if you turn for turning off the connect, uh, conduction, so you um, just make the gate uh, 0 and so this, uh, this channel will go. So, there is no conduction and if you want this channel to be on. So, you just apply a voltage here. So, this, this channel becomes on. So, pictorially it is represented like this. So, we have got source and drain at the two ends and there is a gate control. So, if you apply a uh, logic high here, high voltage here, then the channel will come into existence. As a result, you can see that as if this transistor is now open. So, the so transistor is now on. So, you can get a conduction from this side of the transistor to this side of the transistor through the channel. On the other hand, if you put a uh, logic 0 here or a low voltage here or, or, or you withdraw the voltage that you had applied, so this, uh, uh, this channel will, no, uh, will not exist. As a result, this transistor will behave as if the transistor is open. So, this, this, this will behave like an open switch. So, in one case it is working as a closed switch when this, uh, when this gate is high. So, this will act as a closed switch. So, you will get connection from here to here. And another case, you will getting an getting an open situation where there is no connection from gate to so drain to source. So this way, this transistor will behave in the form of a switch. So we'll come back to these transistors again later. But what I essentially mean is that these are the these small transistors. So they they are the uh, um, they are the tool by which we we represent these uh, switches in the digital circuit. So they will be used again and again for whenever in the. Uh, circuit design. 